the impossible task for a real estate agent. Sell me this pen. Now we've heard this a thousand times, right? This is the age old test. Sell me this pen. So you can listen to their sales pitch. So many problems with that, but I'm convinced a realtor can't do it. A real estate agent cannot sell me this pen. And there's a reason for that. It's because you know who hates salespeople more than anybody? Other salespeople. What I found is that over my 24 years coaching realtors here, the vast majority of them are adverse to sales presentations. They don't like to be sold, which is why effectively they do a bad job at selling themselves. It's very simple. You're not going to be successful as an agent unless you become a student of the game. You have to learn this stuff. You have to watch sales presentations. You have to be comfortable learning about that. You know what your number one motto should be? Please sell me something. Please sell me. I want to watch your presentation. I want you going to the county fairs to learn how that guy sells pots and pans. I want you to go to anything that you can go to where you can watch a sales presentation. I want you to log into every single webinar you can find today and watch sales presentations, not to buy what they're selling, but to learn how to actually sell. Now, the reason this came up is I was on a call here a couple of days ago, and we were talking about my Saturday morning routine. It's the only time I turn on my television. Uh, so Saturday mornings, I turn on my TV, most Saturdays, obviously, depends on what I have going on, uh, because I watch all of the paid programming. Now, in my case, I buy everything that's being sold. I buy every single thing because I want to see what their upsell is. I want to find out what they're doing, how they're offering this, because that can be used in your own business. How can you be a good salesperson and you hate sales? If right now I roll into a sales pitch for you, do you leave? Oh, oh shit, here comes the sales pitch. I, I got to leave now. Really? What if your prospects did that to you? What if they were adverse to sales? You are never going to get good at sales. You are never going to get comfortable with it. You're never going to find the right uh, wording, what I call find your voice. You're never going to find your voice, get the right wording down, get the right presentation in place, unless you watch a lot of presentations. I want you to learn about the Slicer Dicer 2000 that'll cut the skin off of a tomato. I don't know why you'd ever want the skin off a tomato. If you watch television ads, if you watch uh, internet ads, if you watch any type of marketing, oh, look at this SUV. You can climb an oak tree and you can go over the rocks with this SUV. Who the hell goes over rocks? It's a mom with kids. But hey, if you can run over boulders with this thing, maybe it sells it. Are you watching it? Are you opting in for everything you can get? How many times have you had a conversation with the post office because you needed to have a bigger mailbox because you opt in for every single thing you can possibly find because you got to be a student of direct mail. You have to learn like every day I have a map. I ha actually carry a container to my mailbox. There's no way I could carry it by hand. That is a free education. It's how you get good at marketing. And I got a question for you. Like, what the hell are you doing in sales if you are uncomfortable with being sold? What are you doing in sales if you're not a student of the game and trying to be sold as many times as you possibly can? Some of the sales folks that I've learned from and have mentored me and helped me, by the way, you know how they mentored me? You know how they made me rich? I bought their shit. But uh, a lot of those people, I've seen their presentation over and over on stuff I've already bought from them, and I'll watch it again. It's how you get good at what you're doing. So if you're the type of person where I said, sell me this pen, and you, oh, do you have a need for a pen? Yeah, this is a uh, inner gel, liquid gel. And what happened? You can, you can write your name with it. Uh, it's high quality. It's made in America. Shut up. Do you really think that's how sales works? Then what happens is you go out to a listing presentation and you start pulling out either a PowerPoint or a flip chart. Like everybody wants to look at that shit instead of look at you. Really? This is what you're going to do? Why didn't you just email it to them? They can flip it themselves. Why do you need to be there? Maybe that's why you're getting beat. Maybe that's why the commodities that charge a lesser price or listed at a higher fee 
or a, a higher sales price. Maybe that's what your problem is, is that we're not doing a good job at sales. What if this Saturday you got the free education by turning on the TV and watching how they're selling everything? I just bought a new cookware set. I don't even freaking cook. Right. If, uh, if there was a way for me to turn on the oven and it made Uber Eats show up faster, I would do that. I bought a whole cookware set from Emerald Forever Pans. Google it. You'll see it there. Great set, by the way. Uh, but I watched it three or four times to see the presentation, see the upsell, see how they're uh, taking away risk, see what they're doing to really create a need for something that I didn't even know I need. I actually know for sure I don't need it. Many of you heard the story. I paid over $2,000 for an office chair. This one's getting older. This is like an $800 Serta chair. I paid over $2,000 for an office chair. The worst chair I've ever had in my life. It's literally in the basement. It's never been used. I sat in it one time. I wouldn't give you 50 bucks for it if I would have seen it at Office Max or something like that. Great education. I'll give it to somebody that wants it, but it's a great education. I'll certainly make a lot more than $2,000 learning how they sold that to me. You have to be a student of the game. You have to opt in to all of the direct mail that you can get, all of the marketing you can get. Now, you don't have to stay with it. You can opt out, right? But you have to learn how funnels work and then get away from it. I don't need you to like fill up your email box with spam or any of that. As a matter of fact, I'd prefer you unsubscribe from a lot of that stuff. But initially, you have to see how they're doing it. Am I intrigued by what they're offering me? What did that subject line do for me? Those types of things. Because if you're worried about the things that don't matter, as an example, for some reason, when I wear a certain colored shirt or several colored shirts, I'm yellow on this screen and then I'm white and then I'm yellow again. And oh my gosh, well, I got to get my lighting and I got to get my... the people that matter don't mind and the people that mind don't matter. It doesn't matter if I'm blue or yellow or green. I give great content. I ain't worried about that shit. So if you're worrying about things that don't matter, instead of the things that do matter, like what you say, how you present yourself, how you show up better than anybody else, you're only going to learn that if you really become a student of the game. And what you'll find is when you hang out with marketers, when you hang out with people that understand how to give a great presentation, build value, and truly do a great job for their customer, where that customer is raving fan once it's over, they start referring people out, that type of thing, you start hanging out with them, it's tough to have a conversation where they're not looking for opportunities to show market. You go to dinner with me or with anybody on my team or any of my top producers, if we go to dinner... You're going to get a marketing lesson in itself. I can't believe they're not, they don't have an opt in page here when we come into the restaurant. Why wouldn't you get their information? You know, if you got their birthday, it'd be very easy to give them free desserts for everybody to show. Nobody goes to dinner by themselves on their birthday, they bring 20 people. So we could get everybody to come to the restaurant. Uh, you're only giving away a little bit of money. You're making a lot of money. If they get that opt in, then you can do a rewards program. We're like rebuilding the whole damn restaurant. That's what marketers do. When they go to the grocery store, I can't believe they got the carts like this. You know, if you had a little bit of an advertisement here and you could get people to come in from, like, we're just rebuilding shit. Because you're student of the game, you see opportunities. So I want you to ask yourself, do you catch yourself from time to time? Well, I'll just get all the training stuff. And then when I hear a little bit of a sales pitch, that's when I'm leaving because, oh my God, I don't, I don't want to buy anything. That's Really? Why you're watching it in the first place? That's why you're leaving? Because like this guy's really good or gal or whatever. This guy's really good. Uh, I know this can help my business, but oh shit, they want me to actually buy something to help my business. So I'm going to leave now. Enjoy the failure. You should opt in to everything you can. You should listen to like uh, one of the greatest things. I don't know what it's called now. I probably sound old saying this, but DVR, right? Where if you have the TV playing, you can fast forward and everything. They created that to get rid of commercials. Uh, what I do is I leave my TV play all day on Saturday and I'll rewind and I will fast forward through the shows to get to the commercials. That's what I do. I watch the Super Bowl for the commercials. I watch television for the commercials. You know why? I'm in advertising. I'm a marketer. That's what I do. What do you think your number one job is as a real estate agent? To list it? To put it on the MLS? To put a sign yard? To get pictures? To negotiate a contract? To do any of that? No. 
How many times have you heard a for sale by owner say, uh, oh, well, I don't need a realtor. I already have an attorney to fill out the paperwork for me. Uh, you got a buyer to sign it? Because that's what we do. Well, I already have it on Zillow. No, I'm talking about marketing, not listing it. I'm a freaking marketer. That's what we do. You want to list it. You, there's somebody in your town that'll list it for $999. That's of no value whatsoever. The only thing you offer as a realtor, oh, well, I'll protect them. And get, you're filling out the freaking blanks on the contract that every single realtor in town uses. It's the state approved bar association contract that you fill in the blanks quite literally. Now, I know there's a lot of stuff we'll do to you know, help with the home sale contingency, the earnest money, the basics. But look, as a realtor, your number one job is to get as much maximum exposure as possible so you can help that homeowner in selling for the most amount of money with the least amount of hassle. That's what your job is. Enlisting it on the MLS and waiting for someone else to sell it ain't happening. That ain't the best uh, use of your time, efforts, or energy. You are a marketer by design. So if you can't sell, if you can't sell me this pen, if you can't sell the pots and pans, if you can't sell your services, if you can't sell why you are far superior than all other realtors in town without saying this, I want you to say that you're superior to all other agents. You are a better option for that homeowner, but you're not allowed to say the following. I care about your business. Customer service is really important to me. I always answer my phone. We're with a fast growing brokerage. We've been in business since 1962. I'm a third generation. I've lived here my whole life. I know the area like the back of my hand. How did Greg know all of those things? Because that's what every damn realtor says, which means it doesn't make you different. All realtors say the same thing and believe that's what makes them different. So don't say those things and tell me why I should use you. If you don't have a good answer to that, we have to fix the sales side. I want you to make money. I want you to be massively successful. So this is a, this is a, um, a key factor for you, a turning point of if I get this part right, I can attract a lot more business. Keep in mind, most of the agents in your town are not watching this. They'll never see this. They'll never become a student of the game. They are adverse to sales presentations. When they're at the state fair or the county fair or the flea market or anywhere else, they're going table to table to table to trade show or whatever. They're going table to table. And when they see that guy sitting up on the stool with the little headset on and he's got the pots and pans and he's giving a presentation with speakers going out to everybody and you see 15 people standing around, they keep on walking. They keep going. They don't even stop. I don't want to be sold. Oh, God, I might actually buy something. Maybe if you fixed your sales problem, you wouldn't be so worried about holding on to that little bit of money you got. Maybe we should focus on the reason you only got a little bit of money. I buy every I bought a makeup set last week, uh, two weeks ago. Uh, the the beauty skin cream from the mountains of Zimbabwe growing on the northeast side where the cotton blooms of the what the hell ever. I bought it. You ever seen my, you think I ever put anything on this ugly ass face? I bought it because I'm a student of the game. I want to see how does that marketing work? Well, Greg, maybe you can afford, that's the reason I can afford it. That's the reason I make huge money because I get very good at sales. Do you think that you can't watch a sales presentation on beauty and skin cream and see how they upsell and downsell and address objections and that type of thing? Do you think you can watch that and not get better as a realtor? Do you think it would have nothing to do with how you present yourself, how you market yourself, how you uh, take a preemptive strike at objections from buyers or sellers before they even contact you? Do you think you could learn something from that? Why wouldn't you? Even if you don't buy their stuff, why wouldn't you be a student of the game? Why wouldn't you watch every single presentation that you can? And literally write down, oh my gosh, that was really good. Let me write that one down. I see how I could use that one. Oh, that was really good. I, I like how they created the problem and then they addressed it with their solution. That was good. I want to do that in mine as well. I, I like how they uh, showed someone that this might be an issue for them and they didn't even realize it would be an issue, but they have a solution for it. Let me go ahead and do that in my presentation. And then you've got all these notes while you're watching the freaking TV. It's called working. That's what you do. 
That's working as a real estate agent, not checking your email and hitting refresh and hitting refresh. And, oh, I better, I want to keep up on the market. Let me see what new listings are out there. So I'm familiar with the, and shut up. Tell yourself, you're not going to think, you, you have to shut your mind off. Tell your mind, it's time for me to shut up for a second. Because it's telling me to do a lot of things that I don't need to do. You want to be familiar with the market for the clients you don't have. Well, that's a genius idea. Maybe you ought to get updated on the new ways of doing brain surgery in case you never need it. Well, just in case somebody needs emergency brain surgery, I want to know. How about if we get you a little better as a marketer? How about if we get you to where you're attracting buyers and sellers? It's going to happen if you really become a student of the game. I've had so many agents say, Greg, what, show me the best sales pitch you have. I just want to watch that. Show, how would I sell this? What is the best way for me to conquer this objection? Can I bake that into my presentation so that it doesn't come up when I get to the end and they're asking about price or commission or whatever? Like get good at the game of sales, the presentation itself, so you can build real value and you can deliver on that value for your prospects. It's how you get raving fans. It's how they stay around forever. It's how they refer you to their friends and family as well, coworkers, whatever the case is. But you have to get very, very good at learning from others, not thinking, oh, I can only learn real estate by watching other real estaters, right? <laughs> like I want to watch other agents and see their presentation. That's the only way it'll apply. There's no way that pots and pan sales could have anything to do with this. Okay. Okay. That's how you get good, and that's how you learn to sell the pen or whatever the product is uh, that you're offering. You know, I've always told it's been kind of a joke with uh, uh, my team here. You know, they're like, oh, my gosh, we got a plan. We got this event. We got, you know, we're going on tour. We're going city to city. We're doing, I'm like, give me a microphone and an order form. I know my stuff is good. I know it's going to help those people. I can give dozens of testimonials i could have them they'll fly in to walk across the stage and show you the kind of i don't need preparation i know my stuff and the proof is in the pudding if it works you don't have to sell it too damn hard like i sell money at a discount that's what i do right somebody give me a thousand dollars i anticipate them making tens of thousands of dollars from doing it i'm selling money at a discount it ain't hard i'm getting results for them if you're a listing agent if you're a buyer's agent if you are able to get them access, they can't find otherwise. Find them properties that no other human can actually find them. It's not hard to sell it, but you got to know how. You got to know how to build that value. Get attention in the first place and build that value so that they'll contact you and they'll work with you exclusively. If you don't have that down, you are not a good salesperson. You have to get better at sales. It's easily teachable. It's a skill, not a talent. It's a skill, which means you can learn this you got to throw yourself in the middle of it. You got to get wherever that training is. You got to get involved in any way you can. Watch every presentation you can on building value for your prospects. That's how you become massively successful. Hopefully, that's motivational for you. It's exciting for you. Um, you know, if you get good at selling, you can sell virtually anything. That's why people that sold insurance, sold cars, sold houses, sold whatever. Uh, a good salesperson is good at building value. As long as they've got a great product, right? You got to do a good job for your client, of course. Um, but once you get good at that, life becomes easy. You know, if you look, um, well, I'll give you an example. You want to see a great presentation where you can learn a lot and how to use that in your own business. Look at the video description below here. Check out some of those links and actually watch the full video. Don't do your shit about, oh, this is 13 minutes. Oh, I think I've seen this before. Oh, well, uh, this is only two minutes, but I, I got to go check my email and my social media. and Become a student for a minute. Sit here and say, you know what? I'm actually going to learn how and why this is being created this way so I can learn how to build it in my own business. You'll see some of the uh, examples in the video descriptions below here. But, you know, every day that I meet with you, and hopefully you're following the channel here, ring the bell, turn on notifications, but you should be following this channel probably over here, over here, wherever it is. Uh, this is how you get good at sales. And more importantly, understanding that as a real estate agent, you are a marketer first. That's what you do. You know, I'm really good at negotiating. I care about your best interest. I'll make sure that nothing goes wrong with it. First of all, you can't make sure. 
nothing goes wrong. You're literally filling in the blanks and maybe there's a couple of addendums. You're going to know how to handle them if things do go wrong, but let's not exaggerate what it is that we actually do. You know what you need to do? That great job that you do and helping your clients and, and representing their best interests, you need to do it a hell of a lot more. That'd probably be a good idea. If you're that good, this helps more people. I don't want you to be the best brain surgeon in the world that always saves their life and you only do 12 a year. You should be back to back to back to back if you're that good. Like you sound pretty confident. Why are they using everybody else? Let's get them to use you. Comes down to marketing. You got to get your message out there. So hopefully that's motivational for you. If there's anything I can do for you, let me know. As an Inner Circle Coaching member, uh, you already know tomorrow we've got a unbelievable call. It's going to be phenomenal for everybody involved here. Make sure you're on the call live. Uh, all members get the links and the reminders and all that stuff. So you'll be getting that. Check out the videos in the description below. See you tomorrow. I'm Greg Luther, and bye-bye for now.